Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum. Today we need to go and collect a few of the cars. Now, the reason I say that, and the Hurricane STO is back, although with something different about it we need to talk about, is that over the weekend it was actually my sister's wedding. Congratulations to her and her husband. And I took a couple of the Schmimobiles over just to have them there. They actually went away from the church, away from the ceremony, in a lovely 1950s Rolls Royce. But we had the Senna, the Ford GT, and the Hurricane STO all over there. I've brought back the STO myself, but the Senna and the GT today we need to go and collect, as well as the G63, which is the car that I took her new husband to the church in. So we need to go and pick that up as well. So we've got to go and do a little bit of a collection errand run. Now we've just taken off all of the colours. This side of the garage is looking magnificent. Tom has kept everything very nice, shiny and clean. We have the M2 competition here. Now some of you will remember this. My dad bought this car probably two years ago now from Tony at TRL Deals, we went down to Barry BMW with Joe Achilles at the time and picked this up. It's done many miles since, it's done a lot of track work since. A friend of his uh, kind of co-owned it and they drove it a lot as well doing different things. It's now fully my dad's as it happens. It's been used a lot, but we ended up with that car here at the Schmuseum when we came here to pick up the others and take them out again. So we came with three people in there and today we somehow got to reverse that process and take that back. Everything else has been shuffled around a bit. We did that, I think, in the last video because I wanted to try out a new style, if I can say that, the two original Schmimobiles at the end. Then we have the two Aston Martins side by side. Then we have two of the Mercs over on this side. The BMW Canna sits on its own. It's a little bit of an obscure one in this respect. Then we've got the two hatches and we'll throw the G63 on the end. So we've got the three four wheel drive cars side by side. We've got a big gap here for the two missing Mercs, which will be the SLS followed by the GT Black Series, both of which are at Opus at the Nürburgring in Germany. And I should, in a couple of days time actually, have the GT Black Series back here. I'm hoping to go back to Germany to get that, to bring it home. The SLS will then be worked on and that will come back a week or two later. No reason we've got the cover still on the 675 LT. Just chilling, enjoying having the two, technically the two purple cars side by side, Orion Purple, Viola Pass, uh, not Passive, eh? Viola Bast. I should get the color of my own car right. But Viola is the Italian for purple. But I think it's a little bit more magenta than it is purple. Now, I'm curious if at this point, as a tractor goes past, you've spotted what's different about this car. Visually, something is not the same as it was. And that is that we have been back to Topaz and we have removed the gloss black that we had here on the front clamshell on the Cofango. So it did have gloss black PPF on there around this whole section, which kind of tied in with the gloss of the windscreen and the roof and the engine bay cover. But to me, there was a bit of a clash with the gloss black and the satin of the carbon fiber. If you have the gloss carbon fiber here, it looked a little bit more natural, but it created this really weird bonnet look. So I decided that we'll leave that off for now and then decide down the line if I want to add it back on again or not. So this is work in progress, I guess, when you're doing a complicated design. And you know, if you come around the side of this thing, it's out there, it's wild, right? And maybe I'll even end up removing the gloss black here as well. Just, I like the way the yellow wraps around the side intake and the way it all fits in. But yeah, we'll see how it shapes up and what changes technically with the STO over time. So I think the initial plan now is that we're gonna take the M2 competition, head to go and get the Senna and the GT Nope, the Senna and the G. Then we'll go back here and then we'll take the G again and go pick up the Ford GT or something like that. Let's see how it goes. Aside from the fact that obviously I drove this car a couple of days ago when we were going in the other direction, I haven't spent that much time behind the wheel of the M2 competition. This being the one with the manual, you could opt to have it manual uh, or with a DCT, but this obviously is the driver version, you could say, the competition being that. Obviously with the previous M3 and M4, they had the competition packages. This was the M2 competition. Just basically facelifted everything, refreshed things, made it a little bit more exciting and made it a car that ticks a lot of boxes and obviously they've been hugely popular. And in fact, the values of them now have held up so well which is really, I guess, part and parcel of the whole industry doing that at the moment. So right now I've got it set up how I quite like it. So we've got the powertrain in Sport Plus, we've got the steering in Sport. If you put the Sport into Sport Plus, it seems to get a little bit, almost too heavy, a little bit fake. And this car has non-standard brakes, which just take a tiny little bit of getting used to. 
but the steering is pretty nice in sport. The sound is obviously quite muted, especially compared to the M3 competition with the Remus exhaust. As the road kind of opens, but the Range Rover in front doesn't move. Now he does, so we can put the foot down a little bit. But it's ample power, ample torque, six-speed gearbox, back into chill mode. It auto blips when you're in Sport Plus on the powertrain, I think. So it automatically does the magic for you, unless you go and turn it all off, and then the car takes over. But as you can probably hear, there's not a lot of sound inside here. It's very, very, very chill. And I guess it's just quite a nice car to drive, to be honest, and that's why they're so popular. We're now out on a nice country road in front of us. National speed limit sign, just what we want. Enjoy this a little bit more. That's where you get lots of the sound that kind of gets piped into the car a little bit, but it feels good in this kind of environment. This is where the M2C is really at home, to be honest. Anyway, we're not too far away from where the Senna and the GT are in garages, and we can work out exactly which order we're gonna do this in. The first thing has been to load a very big TV box into here, which we're gonna be storing temporarily over at the Schmuseum. The second thing is that the Ford GT is there, although we're gonna be coming back for that in a moment. It's not been living on a smart charger because it's only been there for about two days. But for fun, my dad's Aston Martin DB11 is also on a CTEC smart charger. But the other thing we need to take later are this very old set of wheels that I have, my Arbath 595 that I owned in about 2012, 2013. I think these were the petal wheels. We will get them completely cleaned, completely tidied, and we'll work out what to do with them down the line. But for some reason, I have owned them for many years. Anyway, we need to go around to the Senna garage to get that out. Then squeezed in over here, we have the Senna, and believe me with the garage entrance, this is kind of tight to say the least, but with the mirrors folded, we can manage. So let me go hop inside, start this up, and we'll pull it out. This is a pretty eventful drive because there is a major road closure near, near where we are at the moment and it means everybody has to go down this one and a half lane wide road which as you can hear has a whole lot of stones and things and if a car comes from the other direction good luck to you there's a whole lot of reversing and having to work out how to navigate around and this car is obviously savagely bumpy as I've got the G in my mirror, I can barely see any of it. I literally get the Mercedes three-pointed star in the middle of the grille. It's all I can see through this tiny rear window. But here, for example, let's hope there's going to be a way to get past. Yes, it looks okay. This is where the Senna is just a mad machine. You can't, with cold tyres, put your foot down. Well, not all the way to the floor, because they're just going to light up and you're going to be sliding around everywhere like a madman. The drama of this thing is unreal. It's not been that long since I last drove it, and getting back into it is, is just a crazy world of what on earth am I driving? Actually, when we went the other way, I drove in the Ford GT and was in convoy with this in the mirror, which was so cool because the way insurance works, I can't really have many people driving the center in the GT due to their values and driving experience and that kind of thing. So to have them out on the road side by side or in front and behind, I should say, given that we do uh, so many drives with all of the other cars, but not so much with the big hitters, let's say. It's just really, really special every time. And I would love to do a big road trip with the two together because now that they're a little bit older, but still actually both have fairly controlled mileages. I've not done insane numbers in either. I'd be quite happy doing some more. You know, this is about to be three years old. It's not just over 3,000 miles. I can't believe that I've only done a thousand miles a year in it, but I'm so careful normally with transporting it to the roads I want to enjoy, as opposed to doing countless miles just because, especially after what happened a long time back and the fear that that could technically happen at any time again, and it's just gonna be a massive, massive, massive headache and problem. And with values of cars like this softening, it would be really easy to write this car off by that I mean if the damage is significant enough that the insurance company would rather scrap it than repair it. Um, which like I say, when you're talking bespoke carbon panels, happens more easily than you might think. Straight line though. Yes, short shifting because it's 
stupid. It's just absolutely stupid. The noises, the feels, the sights, the sound. Still with the G63 in the mirror. It's got about half a tank of fuel, so we will actually stop in just to fill it up before we get back. I like to keep the cars always with a full tank because you never know when the next trip is going to be or the next outing or the next time that it would be helpful to just have it ready to go on the button, battery conditioned, full tank of fuel, tyres inflated properly. All of the vibrations, noises, sounds and craziness and solid brakes as well, very solid brakes. So we're going to have a nice acceleration again in just a moment. It's quite busy out on the roads today. We'll have to do exactly this route again quite shortly. Wait till the wheels are straight when they are. I was thinking that the GT Black Series was very fast. And then you get back into a very, 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 very fast car and you're reminded that actually this is like a step above. <laughs> this is just this is just silly. And the guys are back then with the G, which is going back out. We're also back with the set. But well, yeah, the centre is back. I need to go and show that. But we're <laughs> taking this back out, right? We are, so I'm not going to put it any further than here. Cool. We'll leave it here right to the front, yeah. but the centre is now back. Tim's obviously brought that back over. It's nice to have this one back in here. How was the drive back, Tim? You quickly forget how mad that car is. Every time. It's... So we've driven back in the G-Wagon to collect the Ford GT. And Tim's also got some older bath wheels here, which, well, he's currently trying to clean up, which is rather comical. Tim, how's it going? I never thought I'd vacuum spider webs off our bath wheels. I didn't know hoovering wheels was even a thing. Yeah, but hey, it works. I, I'm not sure that's the most effective in the world. They probably need a jet wash on the back. They'll need a serious jet wash. Yeah, I think we'll let Tim continue hoovering these. But we'll Fundamentally, this will mean we can at least put them in the car. Yes. Which is the like, first problem. Yeah, because I yeah. don't think we want to bring spider webs and spiders back to the bar. No, although I think this is partly the beauty of the G-Wagon having rubber floor mats, is that if we needed to, we could pull them out and hose them down as well. But we'll get these clean enough to get them in the G, get it loaded and get back on the road with that beast over there. I'm not gonna lie, these twisty roads get even harder when you're in a left-hand drive car because left-hand corner in front of me, I have to be tucked right into the left. I can't see more than about 10 meters in front of me on the road. If a car was coming, I would have no idea. Although I always find it amazing how well this car rides roads like this. As supercars go, the suspension is very well set up. The hydraulic set up, of course, in here. Very McLaren-esque, although obviously the center is so brutal. It's not really a fair comparison in that respect. This is more like the 675 LT. How cool does this look, Tom? It is absolutely epic. Following the Ford GT whilst in the G-Wagon, getting a nice massage is like somehow one of the best things in the world. I mean, you can't go wrong in this car, can you? The massage seats are great, and like we said, it was probably 10 or so videos ago, 15. We didn't even realize the car had it. No. And one day, we found it. Yeah, because there's no obvious button. There's nothing immediately that says, I have massage seats. It's just hidden in the menu. So unless you go looking for it, well, you'd never really know. Um, but we're now on the road. We've managed to... Well, we're now not following yes, the GT. We're following a Corsa. To lose him a little bit. Well, we're just taking it nice and easy. Not that Tim isn't. And we do have four wheels in the back, which we're we trying do. to well, not throw is, around too much. This is the thing, obviously, as the guys know, we've got some of our wheels in the back, which, obviously, in something with as much body roll and suspension movement as this, we're having a difficult time keeping them where they should be. And that thing there sounds phenomenal. And again, everyone always criticises it, as Tim says. I was waiting for you guys to overtake me, but you never came. Well, well Tim story, is upset. Yeah, story of the... Uh, of the day is that Tom never came. Sorry, mate. It's so quickly getting towards the end of the day, of course, that is the thing with this time of year. Much shorter days, although thankfully fairly decent weather. The weather over the weekend was great, which of course was 
wonderful for the entire family, considering the time of year that we are at. You can hear all of the funny buttons, like indicators that are on the steering wheel, but much more controllable in the center. You can put your foot down so much earlier. Still more than happy to scream away. The GT is just a brilliant car all around, except for the lack of luggage space. But if you're in the car on your own, that is hardly a problem because you just throw it all to the passenger side. But normal driving, it's like, yeah, jump in, go with the flow, drive it. Such a different car to the center. Obviously, V6 instead of V8, but fundamentally, despite both cars being effectively the same objective of going very fast on a racetrack, doing things in very, 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 very different feeling ways. But probably the reason I like them both comes down so much to the fact that they're both very heavily driver-focused cars. You know, they're made for this purpose, for being tracked, for being enjoyed, for being driven hard. And very different to, let's say, the feeling that you have from the Lamborghini. The STO is a completely different type of drive. It feels almost kind of dangerous, whereas these are quite controllable, comparatively. Anyway, we will need to fill this tank. It's only done 98 miles since the last fill, but we're on a quarter of a tank. And that's just gentle driving, but I am more than used to this now. I have experienced it for long enough to know exactly how it is and exactly how bad it is when it comes to the fuel side of things. Time for an obligatory tunnel run then. Oh yes. Who's going to give a big first? I think us. channel most likely oh, there will there'll be something be. pretty exciting coming plus we should be having an arrival at the museum later this afternoon or this we evening. will so we've got whilst tim is away and in fact for the next couple of months actually we're going to have another couple of guest cars coming to stay with us just like the 1968 911l and well weirdly enough speaking of porsches i think that's very on theme for one of them and a lot of you guys have been saying that we need another V12, maybe Italian vehicle back in this museum. Now, obviously it's not gonna be Tim's, but something along those lines may be coming very soon, so keep your eyes peeled. We are back. That's now the Senna and the Ford GT, and Tom is outside with the G, just moving it into the wash bay, because we've got to give these a bath wheels are clean. So let's hop outside and we'll give them a quick rinse down. The G is in the wash bay then, so if we open it up, we have, four very grubby above wheels and two with tires we don't know why there's two with tires but and two without but we have two with tires tom is trying to be annoying but it's fine uh pressure washer is out we need to give these obviously a rinse because they are very very filthy and then figure out what we're doing with them we've got everything ready here's our topaz luxury shampoo even got a couple of old dirty microfibers out which are even embossed with the topaz logo which is really cool just to wipe things down whilst they're still dirty and of course we've got our wheel bucket with our Topaz branded wheel woolies, which are absolutely fantastic. So we're gonna get this set up, and next time you see these, well, they should look a lot different. That's pretty satisfying. That looks completely different to that. All right, let's have a go on this one, see what happens. That instantly is such a big difference. I mean, it is. It's not perfect yet, and we'll obviously get it to. No, as I mean there's still can. there's still a couple of little bits here, but ultimately these wheels have been sat for years and years I think and Tim's years. Said about seven or eight years at least. Yeah, I mean, what, I mean, let's go back to when did he have the Abarth? It was a long, long time ago. So, right, let's crack on with these. Keep spraying them, and we'll see you guys in a second. Little progress update. Then we've got these last two to go over, and they instantly are coming up really well. But over here by the shutters, we have the first two which we 
well, I assume we're finished with Tom. And they are looking 10 to 20 times better. Like, they're not perfect. They've been sitting around for a very long time, but you can actually see that they're white. You can see all the engraved lettering in them. Even inside the barrels, it's not as bad as it was. And there's no more cobwebs. And that is obviously a big bone. So that's two done, two left to do. So we're gonna crack on and then we'll have a set of a bath wheels ready to find something to do. We're cruising. Do people know where we're going yet? I yeah. might have mentioned earlier yes, on we that did. we will be dropping you to the airport for a surprise special trip, shall we say? A surprise special trip is accurate. So they don't yes. know where we're going, they just, or where you're going, they know we're taking you to an airport we're and going you're to flying. Through. And more importantly, <laughs> this. We're already like three or four miles past the start of a traffic jam on the other side. Yeah, yes. we might have a long journey home, Tom. Oh look, we're actually exiting. We do. We're, we are. Yeah, we're exiting in half a mile. We are. This isn't going to go well on no. the way home. Sorry guys. This is going to take us a considerable amount of time to get back, which is not good because as we mentioned earlier on, we do have the first of our guest cars arriving this evening, which is very, very special. I'm a bit jealous. Yeah, you're not going to be here, here to take delivery of it. But do you know what, Tom, the one thing that we are lucky about, we mentioned it on our way back to this museum earlier, we both have massage seats in the front. We do. Well, you don't. Anymore. Well, not currently, but when we're both in the front heading back yeah. to the barn. And, and you know, just in case Tom drives in a Hold on. Yes. What am I, what am I trying to say? <laughs> in case Tom, put, if, if Tom accelerates too much for any tunnels, then I can hold on. I don't know. You, I'm. I, the accusation is not good. I'm a far more sensible driver than you're making me out to be. Fair. He says, grabbing. Right. Let's get to Heathrow. Get you on a plane, and then me and Tom can cruise home. Fifty as... mile an hour average. How exciting is that? Now it's fifty. <laughs> the quickest fifty I think I've ever gone to. G-Wagon style. Well, I've only gone for a couple of days, but it's a busy couple of days. First little flight back and forth, and then bringing one of the Mercs home, I hope. Eventually. That's the plan, at least. Which one? Can I have the SLS back, please? The SLS is not fixed yet, Aww. but it might be by the time I get there in a couple of days' time. Yes. I'm just going to decide. I'm going to put the GT and the SLS in front of me and say which one am I bringing home. Flip a coin. Yes, and then bring that one, and we'll go get the other one later. Fingers crossed we have another noisy 6.2 litre coming back to the museum very soon. Although that said, I'm also very excited to hear how the GT is now going to sound with its new exhaust system. Well, I'm from more Opus. excited to hear that, to be honest, yes. than the SLS, because I know how the SLS is. I miss that car already. The GT is so freaking phenomenal. It's so good. Yeah, right. I do need to get it out on the roads at some point, because I've still not yet driven it. So once it's really? back and got its new exhaust, I'm going to have to get that out for a little B-road blast. You know what I haven't done? Give you a full tank of fuel. That's fine. 61 Hello. miles to empty. That wasn't very helpful, I think. I think we can make it back. I, I'll fuel it on the way back, it's okay. Find a way. Yeah. And we have made it to the land of planes. That's it, we've made it to the airport. Tim's just in the back grabbing his stuff out before he's gonna hop on the plane for what's quite an exciting adventure ahead. I really wish we could tell these guys exactly where he's going and what he's doing. It would be nice, I'm not gonna lie. I've never heard someone call this place the land of planes. <laughs> it's quite funny. I mean... But you're not wrong. No, it's... There is lots of planes. I think we can hear planes or stuff. I don't know if it's planes or just air vents, but it's, it's quite loud here. We're at an airport, Brad. I think we can probably hear planes. It's probably a plane, yeah. Anyway, so he's just getting his stuff out. So he's behind there he somewhere. Really ready. Yeah. ready. He's, he's getting ready. there. And, uh, and very soon we can wave him away and get back to making some mayhem at this museum without him. The secret journey begins. The secret journey begins. But it's an exciting secret journey. Do we give them a hint as to what's coming no, up? We or? Don't. Not no. where I'm going, not where anything. But everything will Sorry, be shown guys. on the Shmi 150 channel? Yes, either the Shmi channel or the Shmi museum channel or some channel or something sometime. Coming soon. We are making our way back from the airport and as you can see in front, we're stuck on town roads. And more traffic. More traffic. Naturally, the, the I'm guessing Waze is obviously avoiding the M25 given the massive queue of traffic we saw on the way here. But as a result, it's just sending us here, which I don't know if it's any better, if I'm being completely honest. Will it be honest quicker? Is it, will it actually be less stressful than sitting in all that traffic? I, I mean, don't know, because as, as, yeah, as soon as they get the accident cleared, the M25 will be flowing again. Um, but then look, we're never going to know, and I think we have to trust Waze on this occasion that it's doing the right thing. We have to. Obviously, we are making it back. I think we're going to make maybe a cheeky food stop on the way, which I'm sure that should give away what we're going to be going for 
Um, and obviously we need to get back for our guest car to be delivered, which is very, 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 very special. So I think we'll jump to that one. Oh, you sent me a live location. That sounds exciting, Tom. Is that the special delivery turning up then? It is the special delivery, where is he? But in other news, we're back from dropping Tim off. Obviously the G is part in the future office. But yes, we have our food, our cheeky Nando's. So it's very cheeky. Special car is on the way, food is here. I'm gonna tuck into as much of this as we can before it gets here, we'll see you guys in a minute. Our special guest has arrived. Well, special guest number one. Special guest number one. Now, you guys will have actually seen this very recently on the Shmi 150 channel. So that might give you a bit of a clue as to what it is. But if you haven't yet worked it out, why don't you guys have a look that way? It is indeed the Gun for Works 911 that we saw up in town the other day when we was out with the Hurricane STO after collecting it from Topaz with the yellow accent. And that thing sounds absolutely phenomenal. I don't know if you guys can hear it whilst I've got the mic on. So well, we better move out of the way just to let Yeah, probably it come should move out of the way. Into the barn. But just in case that isn't picking up very clearly, we'll do another audio clip shortly so you guys truly get an idea of it. Wow. There you go. Wow. Sounds phenomenal and we'll have a look around it shortly. The engineering is phenomenal. We got a chance to get up and close and up close and personal with this the other day in central London and what a special machine. That is gorgeous. And obviously, very special note to the number plate there. So I love the rear lights on it. Yes. I don't is think there's in... anything I don't love about it. Wow. Well, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It's finally here. Our guest car has arrived. And before we park it up, just probably over in the corner next to the Clio, just so it's out of the way, I thought, let's just take you around a couple of the details that are quite obvious, such as the gorgeous ducktail spoiler. And there are a lot of details, just to point out. There, there are. are so many There's, little details. I, I think we're going to have to do a full video on the car at some point, if you guys are interested. But, you know, underneath this ducktail, we can see we've got the gold insulation, as obviously we all know that's the best reflector of heat. If we come around, we've got the carbon barreled wheels, which, <laughs> I mean, are absolutely stunning. Oh, it's ridiculous, isn't If it? we jump onto the interior, I mean, just have a look in there, guys. Ah, so we've got Winchester Limited, one of 25. It is. But it's just, it's stunning, isn't it? It's stunning, even just behind the seats, the detail, carbon, where the rear seats would be in a standard 911. These it's lovely carbon bucket seats. Absolutely stunning. And I think one of my, one of my favorite details, if we come round, is the exposed carbon stripes on the bonnet. So obviously you can see this is a carbon panel and those have been left unpainted and lacquered over. So there's no gap, there's no nothing. That is how it is. So anyway, let's stop obsessing over this one. Let's get it parked up. And then I think it's probably time to head home. What do you think, Brad? Yeah, it's becoming another late night at this museum. Yeah, we, it's been a while since we've had one this late, but um, let's crack on and not make it any later than we need to. To begin with, we have the key with the Gunfer Works logo right there, the GW. That looks very futuristic. <laughs> it does. It's Which really is a complete cool opposite for a, for a classic 911, but obviously this one is so well modified that I don't think it can even be classed as a classic. A resto mod, isn't it? That's what they call them, resto mods. I think this probably would come under the resto mod category, but I mean, just the level of detail that's gone into that alone shows just how much has gone into the car. I mean, you know, just look at the details in regards to the speakers with the carbon door cards. Logo in here, but we're going to have to come back to this because there is so many little things we can run through. There are. But I think once Tim's back, we'll do a full walk around video. But for now, let's... Let's start her up. Put the key in the magic bowl. And... Listen to that. That sounds insane. But yeah, so as Tom said, this is gonna go in the corner next to the Clio, and obviously we have another guest coming to stay for some nights at this museum. We can make that joke, but this thing is just outrageous. Outrageous. There we are. The legendary gun for works is now parked up. We've stuck it in the corner for now, just out of the way, so that no movement is gonna be happening near it, and there's absolutely no risk of anything that could happen whilst it is staying here 
in our care. But now, Tom, I'm going to cut you off again. Go on, go on. It's next to the Clio, so it's in very it, good company. It is, and I think we could probably safely say that's the first time that one of those has been parked in a garage next to one of those. The Clio is making loads of firsts. It's it like is indeed. A Clio making... and a Senna, a Clio and a Ford GT. Yes, it's pretty good, pretty good. This thing has lived quite the life already in the short time it's been with us. But as we said, that's now there. That's shortly going to get one of our covers over it, of course, just to ensure it's free from dust whilst it's here. And the owner is going to be coming to drop off special guest number two, which is going to park alongside it tomorrow, and the SeaTech charger, so we can get that on. So during its stay here, that's not going to go flat. Now, coming around, everything is currently uncovered, which is obviously something we are going to have to get changed over the course of well, about the next 10 minutes or so, yep. <laughs> just before we head home. But it does look extremely colorful in here. And actually, I think seeing a bit of white in here isn't the worst thing in the world. Maybe at some point we'll have to convince Tim that maybe a, a metallic white, I should probably point out, because we do, of course, have the white of the C63, but that's a very different pearlescent white. Pearlescent, that's the word. And it does look absolutely glorious. I can't take my eyes off of it, actually. But as we said, it's been another crazy day here at this museum. I think it's going to be time to get everything packed up here, make sure everything is on their SeaTech smart chargers, because, of course, the Lambo, the Ford GT and the Senna are not currently on, given that they've just returned from Tim's parents' house. Did we say where they'd been? Yes, yes, we did. We've that. collected them on video, of course we have. Excuse me, guys. But Obviously, it's nice to see them back because it actually makes the place feel a lot less empty. Because I think yes. we both agreed that when it was just the LT parked here and none of these three were anywhere near. It was looking here, a bit bare in here, it which, felt is, bare. which is really odd. Like I say, initially it didn't feel that bad when a few of the cars had gone out because, you know, it'd only been the once that we've actually had everything here. But all of a sudden you take out a load more Especially it, as they were all from this side as well. Yes, just, and all we had was over that side, and this was such a barren land. I'm glad to have the beasts back. But as we said, I think it's going to be time that we start pulling covers over and getting the SeaTex on, ready for these things when Tim gets back from the very secret trip, which is, of course, coming soon as he said himself on the Shmi or the Shmuseum, it's coming on one of the channels, so do keep your eye out. You'll know exactly what it is because it's quite special. I think we can agree, Brad. It's very special. I mean, we know what's coming. I and yes. it's, it's exciting, but these guys have no idea. So like Tom said, keep an eye out on the channels and it will all be revealed hopefully very, very, very soon. Yes, this surprise trip will make a lot more sense. And I think a lot of you guys are gonna be going to be giving him a push let's just say that and that brings to a close another crazy day here at this museum and it's actually just took me a while to realize that i'm actually wearing my flat six t-shirt today which is very appropriate given our guest car now once again it's another late night here at this museum which hasn't actually happened for a while and it's been a very busy day but it's been fun we've had lots to do lots to see yes it has been an extremely fun day obviously getting these guys back bringing a splash more color into the Schmuseum. The rainbow's almost returned. The we just need has. the GT, which hopefully Tim might bring that or the SLS back. Yes. After he returns from his trip. Exactly. He's currently away. The GT Black Series and the SLS are currently sat at Opus, which is in between where he's gone and here. I think we can give that much away. So hopefully on the way back, he'll be collecting the GT Black Series and we can have the splash of yellow in here to complete the rainbow. Now, as I'm sure you guys have noticed over my shoulder, the G63 is parked just by the shutter entrance because, well, as we've just said, Tim isn't here at the moment, so he can't tell me that I can't take that home. So anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed coming along on this crazy adventure once again, and until next time.